Many people would consider August 12th, 2017, to have been a tragic day in the history of Charlottesville, Virginia. I consider it to have been a tragic day in the history of the United States. It was on this date that white supremacists and counter protesters clashed violently on the streets of this American city. One of the many disturbing scenes that day depicts a group of Ku Klux Klan members coming down a flight of steps from a Confederate park, wielding Confederate flagpoles, and a black man with an improvised flamethrower confronting each other. But don't let the irony of this picture be lost on focusing on these two confrontational parties. If you look very closely between the calves of the first Klansman, someone had hand scrawled on the step the word peace. And on the step right below by his socks and ankles is written the word love. However, peace and love were not the theme of this day. Shortly after this, the leader of the KKK group comes around the corner wearing a bandana, a blue jean vest, and black jeans. He turns, pulls out a handgun, points it at the head of the black man and shouts, hey nigger, and then fires the gun into the ground near the feet of the flamethrower. While the police in green neon vests stand only a few feet away doing absolutely nothing but watching. Let's take a look at this video clip, courtesy of the ACLU of Virginia. Violence had been predicted well in advance of this event. Many participants came wearing the uniform of their organization or attire that identified their ideology, while some, like the Klan leader, came in regular street attire. Here he is in his traditional robe and hood. Now, this is your country. It may not be Big Sky, Montana, but let me assure you, Charlottesville, Virginia is as much a part of your country as anywhere you live. And if you are an American, the city of Charlottesville is as much your city, regardless of where you live. So therefore, its problems are your problem. As an American, Charlottesville is my city. So therefore, its problem is also my problem. Together, it is our problem. So how do we address this? We can blame the black guy with the flamethrower for shooting the, the flame, or we can blame the Klan members for, for swinging their uh, Confederate flagpoles. We could blame the Klan leader for shooting the gun. We could blame the police for standing around doing nothing. Or we could blame ourselves for allowing our country to reach this point in the 21st century. But let me tell you something. Sitting around casting blame with no personal accountability solves no problems. Our country can only become one of two things. Option number one, it can become that which we sit back and let it become, or it can become that which we stand up and make it become. So let me tell you what I did. That Klan leader 
lives about an hour and a half from where I live in the state of Maryland. I called him up and I said, look man, we need to talk. Not Klansman to black man, but man to man. We are both American and your Confederate history is as much a part of my history as my black history is a part of your history. Let's explore American history together. He agreed to sit down and have a conversation with me. We set a date, I drove to his house, I sat in his living room for a couple of hours with him and his clan's lady fiance and listened to his narrative of American history from a Confederate perspective, of course. When it was my turn, I suggested that he let me take him and his fiance to Washington, D.C., to the new Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture, and that we toured this museum together. He agreed. We set a date, I secured the tickets, he and his fiance drove down to my house, they got in my car, I drove them down to Washington, D.C. Here we are entering the museum. You will notice his head attire. <laughs> now, we toured the museum, letting the history flow in, checking out different exhibits on slavery, integration, segregation, Jim Crow, watching little video clips on blacks pioneering blacks in the arts, in medicine, in science, in sports, and in music. The Klan leader is a big fan of rock and roll music. His biggest idol is the late, great Elvis Presley. I happen to have played piano for the man who invented rock and roll, the late, great Charles Edward Anderson Berry known to all of you as Chuck Berry. I played piano for Chuck for 32 years. Without Chuck Berry, there would be no Elvis Presley, <laughs> no Beatles, no Rolling Stones, Leonard Skinner, Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, Van Halen, Elton John. Anybody who played rock music, their DNA goes all the way back to Chuck Berry, okay? Chuck's cherry red Cadillac is on display at the museum. So I took them to see it. Now, upon leaving the museum, the clan leader and I posed for a picture for posterity <laughs> of our visit there together. This does not happen overnight, folks. This happened in the flow of a year, okay? Now, within a few weeks of this, we had solidified our friendship and it continued to grow. Within a few weeks, he was to get married to his clanswoman fiance. Now being a solidified friend, I, along with other clan members, were invited to his wedding. That's deep, but guess what? You know, I'm trying to figure out You'd have no problem picking me out at a clan wedding, right? <laughs> I would be the one, don't say it, I'd be the one not wearing a robe and hood. <laughs> but it even went deeper than that. It went way deep, okay? The clan's woman is from Tennessee. Her father was unable to travel to Maryland to give his daughter away. Rather than ask one of their trusted clan members to walk her down the aisle and give her away to the groom, they asked me. That's how solidified that friendship had become. So I agreed, and so it happened. There I am walking her down the aisle. Now, again, this does not happen overnight. It does not happen through violence. It does not happen by yelling and screaming and beating each other up. It happens through dialogue, through conversation, 
through love, through patience, through making an effort to communicate, to be willing to respectfully listen to one another. Here we are, the, the Klansman, the Klanswoman, and me in the role of surrogate father. These people consider me to be family. And I love both of them dearly. I have changed the flow of their direction from a year ago where they were headed when you saw that to this. This is progress. This is what we seek. And I can tell you something. We spend too much time talking about each other, talking at each other, or talking past each other. Why don't we spend more time talking with each other? Now, I'm gonna ask you a question, and I want you to come up with an answer before you get home tonight, Whether, or before you get home whenever you go home. Okay, so some of you all might live a little ways away, might stick around for a few days, but you come up with an answer. I don't care if you live right across the street or you live across the country. By the time you walk in your front door, I want you to have an answer. I've shown you what a lot of people perceive to be impossible to make possible. When conventional methods fail, then be unconventional. Step up and be a leader. Try something different. And you might find that flow might lead you in an unexpected direction where people who are perceived as enemies become your friends. I'll tell you something. When two enemies are talking, they're not fighting, they're talking. Even if their voices get a little loud, they're still talking. It's when the conversation ceases that the ground becomes fertile for violence. So you wanna keep the conversation going. Just for a moment, put aside blame, put aside judgment, put aside politics, put aside race, and have that conversation man to man, American to American, okay? And ask yourself, and this is what I want you to answer before you get home. Are you gonna sit back and see what your country becomes? Or are you gonna stand up and make your country become what you wanna see? Good luck, thank you all very much.